Bada bing, bada boom, we're live. This is 2OF Entertainment. Well, here we go. It's the man that promises you nothing and delivers. It's the veritable man motor mouth. It's Road Woods who feels the need to call himself Rob Vega. It somehow makes him feel important. Anyway, do have a listen and try not to throw up. I get a kick out of that that you, you say try not to throw up on that. That is really cool. Oh, cool. We got some, we got some it's a very out. it's a very cool theme tune, I have to say. I have to take David absolutely full credit for really it. Surprised. David did really well. He did good. He did good. How is David? Is he all right? Is he good? He's alive and well. I, I we did a show Tuesday together, and I'm I won't see him out till next week. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, you know, so what are we what are we gonna we going we, I thought we had still the last time yeah, I thought I would do this things. and then we got we got on some tangent and we never we never got back to anything that I was. I'd sort of like you made notes of. Do you have a list now? I've I've got a I've got a little a, a diatribe here or a dialogue, which we'll just we'll just spit out and see what you think, and we'll take it from there. How's that? I love it, that. It, it's born out of a frustration that I think most people share with where the world is right now. Just there's so many things going on, and and all I'm seeing is just a, a bunch of people. Um, all you see is a lot of people blaming other people. That's all I see. I just see people blaming other people there isn't anybody what what i think is quite extraordinary uh is this unless i'm missing something there are very few people standing up particularly in leadership and saying yeah it's my fault no one there isn't a single person taking accountability for a single a single thing the key the key to leadership right now in the world whether it be in business politics you name it god even in marriage is um leadership and marriage you know what i mean is uh, it's somebody else's fault. They are doing this to me. It's them. It's never, you know what? I could be screwing up. No one does that. No one says that. It's like it's always the key to leadership is who can you find to blame for yours or the people you're responsible for's fault. Correct. And it's, it's I, I don't know if I'm, maybe I'm myopic. And I'm not seeing the big picture, but that is where I'm sitting right now with all the stuff going on in the world. Mm -hmm. That's all I see. And this is why people love sport so much certainly here but everywhere sports great because it's almost like a a release from that but then you get pundits coming on and blaming coaches and blaming players and blaming the media why why it's it's crazy there's always blame it, it's it's amazing um so so that actually isn't any of the rant that i wanted to mention but We'll start with that. I've, I've got but stuff here that I can stiff, uh, get but into. Go ahead. What do you think, Steve? When I make a mistake, when I make a mistake as a leader, I admit that I make mm -hmm. a mistake. I mean, of course, then I shoot the people under me because it's their fault. But of course, yeah. I, but of course, because it's the way it is. No, but I, look, I made a mistake. It's my fault. Actually, if my team makes a mistake, it's still my fault. I'm the leader. Like, I should have mm. caught it. So, i never like chastise somebody. I always use it as a learning thing. And you're right. Leadership today is who can I blame the mistake yeah. on? Yeah. Instead of saying, hey, listen, yeah. we made a mistake and now we're going to fix it. And that's what I tell people when they come work for us. I'm like, listen, here, it's very simple. You work. You kick in the door. You go forward. If you make a mistake, we're okay with that. That One, it shows me you're working. And two, we can fix that mistake. If you don't ever it, make a mistake, then I doubt that you're really working. And, and so it's interesting. It's just, yeah, it's interesting to say about mistakes because obviously um, I use the sport analogy. So we've obviously got this rugby team here that's doing pretty well. Uh, the Springboks are doing pretty well, and um, the coach is this chap called Russie, who's Ooh. who's he's a phenomenal guy. But one of one of the actually here's an example of a guy who probably does take responsibility, and that might be the difference, and that might be why so many people here are enthralled by what he's doing. Um, there's probably many people around the world threatened for some idiotic reason. Shouldn't be. They should just be taking a, a feather out of his cap, a leaf out of his book, or whatever the expression is. He is, um, you know, th there, there's video of him sitting with the players when he just became the coach of right. the national side, telling people what a dick he used to be as a player, wow. um, putting himself in the front line 
of of his own attacks. In other words, don't be me. Don't right. do what I did. Don't don't be a don't be a, an ass. Um, you know, if if there's anything I can teach you, it's don't do that. You've got to you've got to you've got to be humble about what you do. You've got to be respectful of what of, of the people that you're doing it for. It's not about you. You're part of a team. All of these things. Right. And he was referring to himself, saying how how narcissistic he used to be as a player. And he really put himself under the uh, threw himself proverbially under the bus. Right. And people in it's not that they it's not that you want a leader to be self deprecating, but you need. You need to see humility in a leader if you're going to have any ounce of respect for him. Yeah. And and if I look at some of, the, I mean, I'm not going to, we're not going to do specifics about the Middle East or the U.S. elections or whatever. But if you look at all of those, the theme is who can I attack? Who can I blame? Who can I point a finger at? There's no one because the thing is, here's the problem, Steve. In 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 those very volatile or inflammatory situations, if you give a quarter, if you give an inch. There's going to be a myriad of people jumping all over you and exploiting your weakness. And that's possibly a reason, I think, why, why we have this type of leadership in the world right now. Because, God forbid, you should admit to anything. Um, because when you admit to something, it's on every form of social media. It stays with you forever. Look, if you've gone and killed someone, that's different. But if you've made an error in judgment, if you've gotten something wrong, as you say, you've made a mistake, you were trying something, it didn't work, you said something, you didn't quite have all the facts, just say that you didn't. But right. you don't do that because, oh, then you're just a bad person. You're a liar and you're this and you're that and you, you don't know what you're talking about. So people, in order to stop that attack, they come out full of bravado. It's him. It's him. They crap. He's an idiot. No one, no one for one minute says, yeah, you might have a point. You might right. have a point. And no, because you can't do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm posing the question and sort of answering it at the same time. I'm saying this is, this is, it, it's like we've become a giant global high school. We are, right. we've become, the world has become so unbelievably immature. You right. want humility from people, but God forbid they show it because then, you know, and you're all over them. I think the problem today with lead, nobody, how do I put this nicely? Ah, never mind. I don't put anything nicely. Don't um, put it nicely. That's the, the problem. problem. The problem with people in general, they're pussies. They're ostriches. They stick their head in the sand or they're, they're asses. Either way. And some of that's impressive. But there's no leaders. We don't teach leadership anymore. When I went to, when we went to school, when you and I went to school back in the Stone Age before fire and electric, you know, there was <laughs> yeah, and stuff, but they taught you how to be a leader. Like they'd be like, yeah. you know, Johnny, today's your turn to lead, if mm. you will, in the Pledge of Allegiance. It's your turn to take the lunch count. It's your turn to do like they made you a leader and you didn't know they were making you a leader. And then like yeah. the teams, today, they don't do that with kids. Take him an iPad. Yeah, great. I can lead the iPad. Oh, good for you. But they don't make children leaders anymore. And if you there's know, a reason for that, you know, yeah. there's a reason for that, I believe, because look, I mean, humanity has done the most God awful things we have. That's what we've yeah. done. We are, we are. I mean, I watched a thing the other day when people were, uh, said they were saying that like 200 years ago, slavery was a thing. You know, if you, if you had money, you had a slave. If you didn't yeah. have money, then you didn't have one. And we, we sort of look back on that and go, oh, those terrible people. At the time, if you had money and you were there 200, 250 years ago, you would have, you, that's what you would have done. You, wouldn't have, you, you would not have been that person. If you think of what rich people do now, well, then that would have been you 250 years ago. Correct. Bang. So humanity is, it is what it is. Um, but, but what's happened is we've, we've gotten to a situation where everything's, it's almost like things have been exposed. They did that. They had slavery. There was racism there. There was apartheid there. There was wars there. There was oppression there. You took his land. You did that. I mean, everybody has screwed everybody. That's just that's just the reality of humanity. Right. Everybody. You can't you can't uh, pick on one race, group, gender, whatever, and say they worst. That we're all just scum. That's just that's it. We are. Um, but but now. We're in an age where it's it's almost like this revenge psychology. We're right. going to expose you. We're going to find what you did, and and we're going to blame all your kids and your grandchildren for this, and 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 you, you you're just going to pay ad uh, ad infinitum. Wait, and that's it? how that's how. But that's how we're going to get you back. And one of the one of the one of the uh, things we look at is 
Who are the leaders? You don't want to lead anybody because when you lead people, you oppress them. You 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 impose on them. Leadership is almost this imposing thing. Right. We can't offend people. We can't lead them because then we're imposing and we're telling them what to do and we, we're managing them and we're oppressing them. Of course, that's not true. Right. Well, it, it might have been. Maybe that's what happened in the past. You had a chief or a, or a conqueror of a land and they took over and they said, right. And that's yes. what happened. It did yes. happen. Yes it did no. happen. I, but yes. in 2024... <laughs> So you don't want to be a leader. Steve, the problem is leadership is almost unfairly in, in many quarters. It, it's almost like, it's like, you, what, you're going to oppress me. You're going to tell me what you do. You're going to run my life. I don't want a leader, which is true. You want a servant, but that's a whole nother ball game. That's a whole nother. Yeah, reality. but the problem, the, the thing with leadership though, is you have to have someone who has, is in charge. Let's say you go A, B, C through Z. But who wants to be in charge, Steve? I who do. wants to be in, I'm charge? in charge? Listen, I'm, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm no, but, large and in charge, baby. And everyone who knows knows. I can, I walk into a room. Yeah, but politically or in a company. But that's yeah. it. I just, I'm, I'm in charge. And I don't have a problem with it. And I take the responsibility of it because that's my job. Right? So why don't you run for office? What, seriously? But this, well, I, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but that's the problem. That's the problem. They would never elect people? They would never, it's the popularity well, contest. They would never, first of all, and nothing against the orange man or Miss Harris. I am not, I'm Jewish. And that's fine. They'd elect a Jew, but I'm not gay. I'm not trans. I'm not um, any of the things you would need. Miss Harris at least covers female and a couple ethnicities. And I've always uh -huh. said, what we really need Hillary Clinton, convert to Judaism. You're a lesbian. Tell everyone you're Puerto Rican. Let's get it all out of the way. And we're done with it. Every other country has female leaders. This is like a big thing that Miss Harris may win. And I'm like, good. The problem is, is that if I run, people are going to be, what's your platform? What's this? My problem is I would tell you the truth. This is so screwed up. This is what we really need to do. People That's what people actually need, but right. no they one wants to hear it. They want to hear, like the, I watched the vice president debate the other night. And of course, we watched that comedy show of Harris and Trump the, a couple weeks ago. But mm. what they want is they want you to massage them. There's no massaging. We have a problem mm. in our country. We need mm. to fix it. And so popularity groups, or if you will, um, lobbyists will not like me because I'm like, you know, healthcare needs to be reformed. Drugs need to be reformed. Uh, welfare. I mean, everything needs to be reformed. There's a problem because people are like, oh, God, we can't have this guy run. I mean, like, he's really going to make things better. And, I, and listen, so I don't get assassinated. The Defense Department, because we're a military country, a military state, you keep spending whatever you want. I don't really care. You, you go play. I'm going to fix the country. You guys go blow up the world. Don't care. And they won't kill me. Everybody else will want to kill me. But that's what we need a leader that's not afraid to fix the problem and, and call people out. Trump, Trump just bullies people. So he's not calling anybody out. He doesn't really have a solution. There's an article in the New York Times today it was talking about if he becomes president, how he's going to go after everybody, you know, with the Justice Department and get rid of law, but, but which is probably somewhat true. And but we don't need that. We need someone to come in and go, OK, we have a problem with the deficit. Raising tariffs on China, which is what Trump wants to do, and even Harris, is not going to help anybody. It makes things more expensive. So now people that can't really afford it now really can't afford it later. The idea is to figure out how you bring things back here and make things affordable, whether it's universal income or whatever. But nobody wants to talk about that. They just want to hear some talking points and some bullshit. And nobody wants a real politician. Like I said, if I would run, two, they mm. would they, it'd be like, oh, my God. Like, you know, nobody would. Two listen. things. Yeah. One. Two things. Um, so the tariffs is, is quite an interesting thing because that's been tried around the world. And uh, I, I don't know if you... Obviously, you know, people, they have heard this, the, this whole idea of you've got that manufacturer, well, John Deere, and uh, they, Trump wanted to impose a 200% tariff if, he, um, if they moved to Mexico. Yeah. And somebody pointed out the fact, they said, so basically what you're then doing is you're opening up a U.S. manufacturer to being basically folded by Chinese imports. Because right. unless you've got a 200% tariff on Chinese stuff, for example, Look, I'm not against. I'm not going to say I'm pro or anti-terrorist, but it's got to be reasonable. Yeah. Why would you pick on your own people who basically just trying to run a business um, with such a ridiculous? Where do you get 200 percent from? The thing is, you you are you are you are telling people right where they can conduct their business, and right. if they don't conduct their business the way you want them to conduct it, um, you're going to make consumers yeah. suffer and kill the business. 
And it's it's extraordinary. But people like that. But the thing is, Steve, people like that language because they don't understand, right. and nor should they. And it, this actually goes That's back to true. something we discussed. They actually, they they, actually need to understand. No, well, no, no, no. I'm not saying they, they don't. Of course they need to, but they don't. This goes back to what we, we said a while ago. Um, it's not going to happen. But right. where you have literally 2% basically handling the voting. That's obviously not going to happen because that's not politically expedient. But most people don't know. Let's be honest. I mean, I put myself into it. If you said to me, run a corporation, I reckon in three months it would be bankrupt. I don't have the experience to do it, so I, I'm not going to do it. Now, the thing about voting is it, it's such an important, special, critical, it, it requires a skill set, knowledge, the ability to disseminate information. Most people uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I know everything. There we go. I'm putting myself, I'm throwing myself under the bus. Right. I'm not saying I'm necessarily completely qualified either. But there are so many, the majority of us are not actually qualified to make these kinds of decisions. And yet we are politically empowered to do so. And then it, it's no surprise that the people that we're auditioning, auditioning for the job, right. like Trump and Harris, are, are going to tell us exactly. They're selling themselves. Right. to us so they 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 it's got nothing to do with whether they're competent whether they actually will build a wall whether there will be tariffs it's absolutely material and most of it won't happen and god forbid it should because oh well you're actually going to do something that's not what people want they as you said massage my feelings make me feel make me feel good but i just wanted to get on back to one other thing that you said you were talking about um you said oh kamala harris uh ticks those boxes couple ethnicities female all of that and it does uh, plug into something that I was was going to say. It's we, we're living in an age, globally, not just the US, globally, where the way we fix the past, the way we fix those past injustices, is literally to upend the situation instead of balance it. Right. So if we had tall people dominating short people for centuries, now the short people get to run everything, regardless of whether they qualified or are tall enough or right. whatever it is. So. We're just literally flipping the pendulum the other way. And all that's going to happen is one day the tall people are going to come back and then they're going to, then the pendulum will swing that way. So instead of balancing it out, we're living in an age where we must get rid of the anybody that looks a certain way that is connected to people that did things. Um, and that backs, that's back to my original point, which is quite frustrating because someone that's this, this, see this guy here. There are so many boxes that I really shouldn't be ticking right now in the world. Right. I'm the wrong color. I'm the wrong gender. God forbid I'm straight. I'm I'm not straight? all these. Who all knows? these I know. Well, I'm a little bent mentally, but that's another story. Um, yeah. But you can't just be you. You yeah. you have to satisfy uh, um, blocks. Right. And instead of us getting to the point where we say we don't want the blocks anymore, that that's the whole point of proper proper. Econ um, societal um, evolution right. is we get to the point where there are no blocks. So we just, the person can have one leg, can be half male, half female, purple, uh, and, but they're very good at it. And right. we say, that's fine. That What are we hiring that person for? To be a leader. It doesn't matter what they look like, sound like, how, how tall they are, short they are, male, female, green, orange, blue, able, it doesn't matter. But we, we're, at, we're at a point now where we haven't ticked enough boxes yet so we've still got these boxes that still have to be ticked. And what it does, I'm, I'm not saying we shouldn't be moving in a direction where we, we, we are what promoting human rights or whatever the hell you want to say. It. But you want to get to a point where we don't have boxes at all. People say, yeah, but you've never, you've never been in a situation where, you know, your box is a problem. Um, yeah, I am right now. Seriously, right, right today. Oh, you're whining. Sure, but what did your people do 200 years ago? They were whining too. So all that's happened is the pendulum has moved to the other side. How have we changed? What's So So yeah. if you're going to well, fix wait, a problem, you, you create the opposite problem. Right. I mean, you that's just what it looks like right now. Revenge well, politics. Revenge well, hiring. Revenge everything. So you said something yeah. interesting. Bert Cumberbunch, his family, I guess, were slave owners in Bermuda. And he that? feels some actor, Burke Cumberbunch, he played Dr. Strange. Oh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Thank Cumberbatch, yes. Yeah, yeah, actor, yes. Yeah, yeah it's Burke. Hugh Cumberbatch, as I call him. Hugh Cumberbatch. So his yes. family owned slaves, and so he feels he has to repatriate, like write a check. And there was this big thing about a lawsuit. I'm like, are you, it's 300 years ago, and you're going to go after the great, mm. big, 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 enough's enough with that. The other thing, though, I will say about short people, because you brought it up. <laughs> um, it's Randy Will, you know, I did. Song. I you did. Know, you, know the, you know the song, 
that song about short people. Um, I do. That song, that song was too long. I do. But anyway, um, it is. Sure, it was. Should and be shorter. You know question: If a short person waves at you, is that a microwave? Anyway. Oh. I don't know. I just, yeah. Hey, if you, oh. if you if you marry two midgets, is that bigamy? Just curious. No, but that's microaggression. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Right, oh, isn't that a lovely term? I heard that the other day. I've heard it. I've heard it before. Where you where you don't quite where you don't quite read the room and you put out the wrong signal right, and right. you're not completely sensitive to the the um, I can't think of it now. I'm, I want to say wokeness, but yeah. that wokeness and is going not, down. You don't it's read the room. What's that? Is going down. Wokeness is going down. People are less woke. They're like enough with the woke stuff. Well, Fine. the thing I'll tell you my problem with it is I don't look. Just to be clear, yeah. everybody should have, in, in terms of access to the basics, education, you should. everybody should have a, a access or the chance to compete. Right. But whether you're any good or not, that that's not up to you. Right. Um, so we all stand on the same field, same platform, the same, whatever we're competing for, whatever it is. Um, if you shorten and it's a basketball team, you know, so be it. But right. if you feel like you're... Well, there was that five foot four guy that was one of the, the it was it was an NBA guy. Anyway, yeah. that must have been a challenging time. But I'm saying is you you've got to look at what your abilities are, what you you know, abilities, not your the things you can't change. Yeah. And if we could get to a point, I mean, we I I was hoping, certainly in this country, that's where we were heading. Yeah. And no, of course I can't imagine what it feels like to live on the wrong side of a party. Sure. I, I had friends who I had to be careful how I associated with them right. back in the 80s because I could be seen to be some sort of a collaborator with right. people of color. So that was sort of the extent to which I, 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 in other words, I heard their story. I didn't live it. You know, I heard the other day that Jamie Foxx, for instance, uh, top one of the, the man with the most ridiculous amount of talent. It's actually unfair how much talent Jamie Foxx has. I, I, anyway, that's another conversation. Okay. He's one of my favorite actors, but... What, what I did find disappointing, yes, I know I'm being naive, uh, you know, but uh, he was saying that occasionally Jamie Foxx gets stopped, you know, people will stop him yeah. and they might not necessarily, or it be nighttime, you know, and they can't quite see him, you know, because, you know, and and I just thought, wow, that is, that that's fairly disappointing. So, no, I haven't had that. Yeah. I haven't had that story. And I told you the one time when I was in New York City and I sat with a friend of mine, very tall uh, all right, for the sake of political correctness, I'll call him an African-American, but he's he's an American, okay? He's a black guy in America, got it. Yeah, he's a man of color, but he's a New York. He's a New Yorker. That's what he oh, is. Oh, then, then he's and nothing he's, other than a New Yorker. It's a black New Yorker. They're just New Yorkers. Okay, like but he's a hell of a, hell of a soft-spoken, hell of an intelligent, hell of a nice guy. So what he looks like for most people is, is quite strange compared to what he sounds like. So he's very yeah. soft-spoken. He's very gentle, highly intelligent. But he looks fierce. He looks yeah. a bit like Seal. You know, Seal, the, the singer, sure. big, big, oh, strong like guy. I mean, if I saw him walking down an alleyway and he was on the other side of the road, I would I would, I would, would go far away because really? he's a very intimidating fellow. He's about 6'7", big fellow. Wow. That's um, tall. Yeah. But, but, he's, but, he's, but, his, but his manner is small, if that makes sense. Sure. Very, almost Did almost member or manner? I, I didn't know. I want to make sure I get that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're there, that portion of the show. But but a very but just such a lovely guy, you know, just yeah. that's what he is. And I remember, and I, I might have told this on this podcast or off off the air or whatever it is. I was sitting there on the west on the upper west side, and we were sitting in those benches there in New York City, and I had he had helped me out. Hmm. We've told it here, but tell it again. Yeah. So and there he was, and we were just innocently chatting, and the next thing there was a there was a police officer standing next so he was on the far side right. of the bench so, so i'm sorry so he was on on my left right. on the far side i was i was sitting here right. or if you want to be english i was sat here yes. and and the cop the cop arrived next to me here yeah and he leaned across and he said can i see some identification and i went for my you know my stuff in my pocket yeah. and he said no not you sir and, and he pointed to my friend wow and it it was a little taste for me of what that must feel like. But no, I haven't lived it. it. It isn't a daily thing for me where people just make those snap judgments. And I can imagine. I can't I can't completely imagine right. uh, with any uh, authority, but I can only imagine what that must feel like on a daily basis to have that almost constant 
concern right. that y- who you are is it's up for examination all the time. I get that. I, I don't understand it because uh, wow, how would I? Right. But I that would be annoying for me. I, I mean, I had a little taste of it there. Um, not my story, but I'm saying that the the answer to that is first of all to say to the cop or, or whoever this is, just you know, just level the playing field a bit. Give, you can have my identification too. For example, level level the playing field. Don't be singular in your criticism of one group. Let right. just criticize everybody then. Whatever it is, critique people in the same fashion based yeah. on their behavior. But and and I think that's where all these movements of what they've striven for, you know, to get rid like apartheid in this country, god awful. I mean, god awful. I can right. again, I can only imagine. I've seen some of the reports. I've met some of the people, horrendous stories. Right. But what's amazing is how many of them, and, and obviously Mandela, who was one of the key figures here, how he managed to, God, I don't know if I could be that that forgiving. He was unbelievable. Um, but he was, a, he was a role model for so many people. Say, so, look, if I can do it, Anybody. then you should be able to do it. Uh, that's, what a, that's a leader. This right. is my point. I'm getting to my point. That's a leader. He didn't seek fame or power, or whatever. He just said, this is what I believe in. And as he said at his trial, it's something for which I'm prepared to die for. Um, Yeah, there are people who say he was a terrorist and he did this and whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But I met him a few times, not not for tea. I was uh, an MC at some events and he was there. Very gracious. He was very, unfortunately, I say unfortunately, I would love to have met him when he was 40 years younger. But he he, he was quite an old man and he was very, you know, he was very... Uh, I would have liked to, you know, I would have, it would have been, you know, hello, you know, good evening, hello. And, but lovely man. But what I'm saying is, if you think of what he went through and right. how he was able to literally just jettison, jettison mm-hmm. his his um, resentment, because mm-hmm. if anybody was entitled to have it, it would be him. And I just think of, now, as I said, I can't imagine, can't imagine what he went through. Right. But the point of people like him, the point of great leaders like that, is that it's supposed to, calm the waters it's right, supposed right. to um like you you mentioned you've mentioned several times you know you, you're jewish and I and am? yeah i know you said that and i'm <laughs> my father was and whatever right. but now what what's extraordinary and as we've as we've jokingly said you know people don't like the jews because they run everything they're, they're famous and they and do we have well space lasers don't forget we and they have space, space lasers. lasers that's true but, but, that would be but steve but what I'm saying, right. just to, I'm just picking on the Jews for any, uh, for a minute, as right. everybody's doing right now, Why not? is, um, you know, one could say, I mean, if you've, I watched the the, tat, the what the tattooist of Auschwitz the other day, right. and you go, it it would be understandable if every Jew on the planet just hated everyone, right, for what happened, yeah. but they don't, and and every group could hate every other group for a reason. Mm-hmm. So do we just do that or do we just go, fuck it, you know, let's just, and at some point you have to do that. Yeah. You can't live with this revenge as, as justified as you may th- believe. You and I can sit here and find things that have affected us and have impacted on our life in different ways. And we can say, right, for the rest of my life, I'm going to hate all those people and I'm going to just, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to have a life full of hate and I want those people to suffer forever. Or their kids, right. and we just really get absolutely nowhere. Like in this country, for instance, quite rightly, they got rid of this this racial system of oppression, and they literally just replaced it with another one. Okay. So um, yes, yes, you. There was an educational backlog. There were there was a massive um, um, gap. Um, they call them the lost youth, the lost generation. Okay. Um, again, can only imagine, not even presuming to know what that felt like, but you literally had 20, 30 years worth of like a whole generation that were lost. They weren't educated. They didn't have access to all this stuff. And for 30 years in this country, we've had a fairly improved education system for everybody. But we still, the narrative is still that there is one group that is somehow handicapped and the other group um, is just get the hell out of the, the offices and get out, get out of wherever. But um, it and it's silly. Much, uh, it, 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 it doesn't, doesn't promote anything. It just takes too much work to hate everybody all the time. It is what it is. At the end of the day, you know, if, if you're, 
and it goes back to like Cumber Butch or whatever the hell his name is. He had to pay retribution, whatever, for something that happened in Bermuda in like 1630 from his relatives. Enough. Yeah. It's like, like now the American Indians or Native Americans, whatever they're called this week. Um, you know, when we gave them land and casinos, I'm like, yeah, well, you kind of stole everything from them. So that I'm OK with that. Like we owed them that. But to your sure. point earlier about slavery, white people were slaves, black people were slaves. Like if you were poor back in the day, rich people like just treated you like chattel. That's so everyone should everyone's going to hate everybody, which is kind of ridiculous. So at some point you grow past it. And to your point about the Jews, you're right. In theory, now we make fun of the Germans. We call them Nazis. I mean, but they are. Um, but we make fun of everybody. But at the mm. end of the day, you see Jews to this day, they drive German cars, they drive Japanese cars. It's like yeah. they're like, you know, it's a, I got don't it wasn't all of them. It was one guy with a little mustache that was you hide this, I can't paint, I'm from Austria. We should hate the Austrians and not the Nazis. Anyway, um, so I'm kidding, we should hate them both. Um, but that's the, <laughs> that's the whole issue is that everybody wants to hate and blame and hate and blame. Why don't we just yeah. get along? I don't know if people realize this. I mean, because they're stupid. I guess they don't. We have a little blue marble, third rock from the sun. You can take a left at Pluto when you come in from the other places. There's 8 billion of us here. Elon, you take the left. Elon, yeah, Elon it's the left. left. When yeah. you come back, it's left. It's Sorry. left yeah, right. he's just, well, in his case, he's just, he just popped in. Yeah, he was... yeah I figured, make a right, make a right. Keep going. Don't even stop. Um, but Through the sun. Through, through the, the sun. sun. Going through the sun. But it, my point is, is that you know, we're, we're only here for an infinite amount of time. Yeah. People, the planet's only this, and we're fighting over what? Russia's invading the Ukraine for what? Something I don't know. They're, they're for 18, they're back in the 1800s trying to claim land. Mm. Um, mm. Once they roll through there, they're going to go to Poland. So now we're back in the third. And then they're fighting oh, in Africa. Yeah. They're fighting yeah. here. They're fight Like, seriously, what are we fighting for? I mean, at the end of the day, all these Do people, you think maybe we like to fight? Maybe that's what it is? Well, I, well there's a book called The World, and it's a fascinating book. And it literally starts off with, and then we killed this group. So we've been fighting and trying to conquer since day one. So I find that fascinating that we are, whoever put us here as whatever experiment, they're like, you know what, it'll be fun. Let's just see if they can kill each other. And it really is like that. Like it's you find people just to be nice and gracious. I saw a video the other day, someone sent me a, a guy yelling at people on an airplane over a seat. And I'm like, I don't be rude. Or oh anything. yeah. Every day. It's a seat, pal. Relax. Mm. You know, it's like, mm. it's okay. It's just a seat. And I'm, I'm fascinated by these people that like, they just blow their stacks. And you, know, you talked about police officers earlier. Now, mm. every time somebody gets stopped by a police officer, immediately they start filming, right? Because God forbid. And the cop will say to them, may I see your driver's license? What, am I being detained? Am I blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, if I was a police, yeah. I could not be, I would just shoot you. I'd be like, you're an idiot. You deserved it. Boom, done next. Which is probably why I'm not a police officer. But I'm like, we've gotten to a point where we have no respect and rightly so, because the police sometimes don't deserve it. And most of the, we'll say most of the time they do. And there's times that they don't. But if you get pulled over from a police officer, instead of pretending you actually know the law, unless you're an attorney, give them your driver's license. Yes, sir. No, sir. Call the day and go on your merry way. But they don't say, like, oh, well, you can't do this and you can't do that. And blah, blah, blah. And, blah. and I'm thinking, I, unbelievable. Like, Everybody thinks they're so entitled. And I'm not saying being a drone or a worker, be like, listen, if they're threatening to beat you or kill you, yes, you fight back, you do what you need to do. But if you were speeding or they pull you over or they see you and you shouldn't be somewhere and they're like, why are you just what the heck? Like, why do you need to have them called like this one video, like 30 police officers because you're filming and someone complained against you and you don't want to give your ID because you're like, my amendment, right? Fuck you and your amendments. Give them the ID and let's get on with our day. And the problem is, is that that goes once again to leadership. We don't have leaders saying, listen, we all have to be civil. We all have to be nice. We all have to get along. And for me to be a leader, and I have to tell you that, one, that's the most pathetic thing ever, right? You should just know that. You should have been brought up that way. And that's where the issues start coming. It's just like how people are brought up, how they're taught. There's nobody teaching respect. There's no one, like you said, no one's teaching leadership. No one's teaching anything. It's kind of like when Obama was president. I remember he got on television once and he said, you know, you have to wash your hands 
after you go to the bathroom or whatever it was. And I'm thinking to myself, let me get this straight. The President of the United States is giving a speech that I have to wash my hands. Shouldn't my mom and dad teach me this? Shouldn't I learn this mm. in school? I mean, that's what I'm saying. They don't teach the children anything. So when I see a certain age group act the way they do, I'm like, like who am I faulting? I mean, their parents, but who else can I fault? I mean, like if they're not learning how to be gentlemen and ladies, who do you fault? You can't go be a leader if you have no one that's a leader to show you to so, be a leader, right? No one. Yeah. Leads. So the so, question, the question then, of course, is: Is this something? Is this? Is this good old cyclical, cyclical human nature trends, or is this peculiar to this age? I think, think it's the downhill of human the human race. I think AI will take over in ten years, and we'll be their drones. They'll be yeah, the leaders. I, 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 I think, and, and again, I don't know this for a fact. It would just be in my assessment and yours. We we're not claiming to be uh, the god that Stephen doesn't believe in, um, but. <laughs> But no, I'm just saying we don't. We're not that. We're not that. Even if there is, yeah. The the thing is, I I res I have respect for the process of trying to make people happier and right. feel more included and more comfortable. And 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 you talk about respect. Yes, we we should. There should be. I for instance, I would respect your position, but not necessarily you. You have to earn that respect. So, for instance, the, the position of the President of the United States is a position that I would respect, but the person that gets into the White House would still have to earn my respect. Correct. So what I'm saying is within society, you're wherever you are, your place, by default, that, that respect should just be there. And now do you do you justify that disrespect? That that do you justify that respect or do you break it apart? And I just think that as we've tried to break down some very necessary barriers. Right. to whether it be genders or races or whatever, those had to go. But it's like we've thrown, you know, the old baby, what the bathwater of the baby, whatever it is, we've thrown the whole thing out. Yeah. So I can I can speak sort of to where you are, but I can speak more, more fully to what has happened here. Right. So for instance, um, we where do people learn their things? They learn it around the dinner table or they listen to their parents. And and what you what you see what you see when you meet people, oh, hello, they're very respect, very polite. And then you look at the way their kids look at you. Right. And you go, well, where did they learn that from? What are you telling your kids around the dining room table when I'm not there? Right. What are you really saying to them? Because the kids are just watching you, listening to you. They're just drinking that all in. Right. So that when the kid acts weird, that's that's how I judge the parents. I look at, I don't judge the way the parents are with me. I judge the way the kids are. Right. And I go, so this is what you really believe. The way your kids are is what you really think of me. That's that's the truth. Because right. your kids don't hold back. They don't. Have, they haven't got those filters yet. Yeah. And I'm saying we've we've tried to break down those barriers very wisely, but we've thrown the whole lot out. So now you can't be a, a leader because you're going to oppress somebody. You can't be a parent because you know you're going to abuse your children. You if you if God forbid you should discipline them. No, you can't discipline your kids. You're going to because at some point some idiot did do that. Right. They were very abusive to their kids or they did something idiotic, right. a small percentage. So they went, right, we're having none of that. We're throwing it all out. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't talk to your kids and, and you raise your voice or you have to be polite to your children. What about the reverse? Now, oh, well, they're just kids. No, they're still people. They still right. have to learn how to behave. But it's, it's almost like we've pulled those tools away from people to be parents, which then creates these people that have no boundaries and no, it's, I'm not necessarily, um, I'm not saying, I'm not condoning their behavior, but Steve, if I haven't trained you to be a human being, am I, should I be surprised if you're not one? If I haven't, if I haven't given you the tools as you've grown up now, of course, you're absolutely accountable as an adult, right, but right. the problem is you've received no training right. because your parents have been told, no, nope, you can't discipline your kid. You can't talk to them in that way. You can't impose rules and restrictions on them because, you know, there were people that they, they didn't want their kids doing this or doing that, and some were abusive and some got very restrictive and they traumatized their children. Yeah, there, there are instances of that, but a very small group. And it's not just parents, it's leaders, it's countries. We have behaved like absolute idiots, some of us. But now all of us can't do shit because mm -hmm. if we do anything that, that looks like we're, we're trying to manage or 
if you 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 gate, let's say you you don't allow your kid out because they've done something, you catch them with I don't know something like weed or whatever it is, or not weed, but I don't know something that could harm them. And you say no, Coca Cola. Coca Cola. You catch them with a bottle of Coca Cola. There you go. Right. Yeah. So the point is, you you're trying what you're trying to do to instill you instill discipline in your kids. So because you're trying to protect them. Right. from something they don't understand it now so they act like a little petulant kid because they are a kid they don't understand but it doesn't matter you are the law in that family but you can't be that anymore because people say no you can't you can't discipline your kids you can't you no you're going to traumatize them you've got to be their friend you've got to be their friend That's bull. no but yeah i know that to steve but this is this is what has happened is you've got this plethora of right. people out there who have who haven't been given guidelines because they've said, no, nope, you got to take those That's away. That's because the parents are pussies. Let's just be blunt. Let's stop making Yeah, but the pussies. parents, no, but hang on. But but yeah. just you you have these instances where where parents have, I don't know, the, the mother's been in a shopping mall and the little boy, I don't know, he punches a, a, a cashier or something. I've seen yeah. kids hitting their parents. So the mother gives them a little tap on the bum. Yeah. And he gets report, and she gets reported. So parents are so scared to do anything. You've taken that away. So the kid goes, "Ah, I can do whatever I want." And then they become that adult that loses their shit on the plane over a seat first because they haven't had training. They're all, untrained, Steve. Yeah. They're not house trained. Wow. They're See, not life trained. I, when I have, I have a, I have a fourteen-year-old stepson, and I, when I first met him, I was very clear that you're a biological life form. I am not your, I'm not your dad and I am not your friend. I'm somewhere in between all of that. And I will teach you to be a gentleman. And if you fuck up, you're in deep shit and I will discipline you. And I don't care what your mom says or what your dad says. And he was like, got it. And he, since I've met him, he's grown up now to be a gentleman, gets the doors, gets the cars, knows how to speak, knows how to act. And he and I told him, I said, when you go home, I don't give a rat's ass what you do with your dad or with your, you know, the inbred family. And I joke with him that they're inbred, but uh, they're not, but they are because they're from Virginia. But anyway, um, I tell him, I don't care what you do. It's true. When, the, when they divorced, they're still brother and sister in Virginia. Anyway, um, or they're West Virginia, I think. Anyway, close enough for government work. So I went through this with him and he is a good young man. And he has a couple friends that are good young men because they're under the same mindset. And he has others that I'm like, what the heck? And when they come over, they're like, oh, we, we have to be like little, little gentlemen because this guy doesn't care. And he'll tell us whatever and doesn't care. And I've told their parents, I'll use whatever language in my house. I choose. If you don't like it, don't send your little piece of shit over here. And they are like, whoa. And when their kids act up, it's like, do you want to go play? And so they're like, no, no, we don't want to go over there. Because I have no problem with discipline. Now, I won't give them a smack on the bum at 14. You're too old for that. But, you know, to your point that you made last week from like zero to seven or zero to eight, that's when you have to discipline them. So you don't have a 35 or 40 year old man or woman on an airplane filming, complaining about a seat or a crying baby. Listen, babies are going to cry when I... When if I fly with a baby, I give it a bottle of scotch, baby doesn't cry. Eh, it's my parenting. Eh, well, I'm good with that. So uh, come on, it works. Um, and so you can't get mad. Like there was a video, uh, my, like our, our fans will send us these videos. They're like, what do you think of this? And there's a video of a guy yelling at the mom with the baby because the baby's crying the whole flight. Yes, it's annoying. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can really do. Um, it isn't the good old days. And I joke about giving the baby scotch, but I remember my grandparents telling me as I got older, they go, you know, sometimes you couldn't go to sleep or you would, and we would just put a little and get, and you would, oh, happy baby and out. And I'm like, okay, I'm good with that. I mean, we all grew up in my generation, which kind of is yours. All we grew up, we're fine. We're tough. We're fine. We know what we're doing. These other generations have just really become non-leaders and pansy little pussies. And I don't want to say anything against Mr. Vance, who has sex with couches apparently in his book. Um, he, wishy-washy, like I watched the presidential debate. You're not a leader, sir. You, you're a very good orator, but you're not a leader because you, you were literally texting two years ago, Trump is a Nazi and he's worse than Hitler, yada, 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 yada. And now all of a sudden you're like, he's the best guy in the world. I love him. I just can't wait to go, oh, you're not a leader. So if you're going to be a leader, be a leader 
And, and to Tim Waltz's credit, Tim Waltz, I don't think is deviated on anything. And he seems, I don't know him. I wasn't in Minnesota when he was the governor. He seems like a good leader. So when I look at these people and I hear their positions or I look at their positions 10 years ago and it's okay to evolve, but you know, mm. one of them evolved literally from, you know, um, to go from a couch to a lounge suite. Right. And the other one's sort of been like, no, I was a first grade teacher. I was a high school football coach. I did this. I did this. And I've always yeah. been this. And you're like, he's evolved because his thinking's evolved and he's changed on a few points, but really his foundation is strong. The other one's sort of like your foundation is sand because eh, I'm going to change my mind because I can become vice president. And I just want a leader. I want someone to go listen. This is the way it is. And I, I really not, it won't happen this election and God, we don't know who's going to win this one. So if it's Trump, we're never going to have another election again. It won't matter if Harris <laughs> wins in four years, it'll be interesting to really, if we can get a candidate that says, okay, here are the real problems. Here's the real issues. This is what we really need to do to fix it. America needs some tough love. That would be a leader. I'd be like, now nah, I'm interested in what you have to say and understands that tariff China, 100, 200, 300, 500% makes it tougher for the middle class one, or middle class to live. I've always felt there's one one uh, one big problem with uh, the whole election cycle in the US. And yeah. and I mean, you may, we've discussed electoral colleges and things right. like this, and you've explained things to me. But the one thing that, if, if you look around the world at other leaders in other countries, now I am not saying at all that, that America should follow any Chinese example or vice versa. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to say, what the hell are you going to do in four years? Yeah. Uh, there's there's not a lot. What I'm saying, we, we actually discussed this off the air once, and we were talking about economic lag. And what I find interesting, and again, I'm not saying I'm an economics genius. Uh, this is stuff that I've looked up. I've looked, I've, I've, I did study economics. That doesn't mean I'm an expert, but I've got some idea of, um, what you might call economic lag, economic right. policy lag implementation. And what I find extraordinary is watching the debates, and, and this is this is not peculiar to this election cycle. It was the last one with Biden and Trump and then uh, Clinton and Trump and blah, 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 blah. And um, th there, is, there are a bunch of people, a lot of people, and not just peculiar to America, it's the same in the UK as well, where where people will say, well, we was we did so well, particularly in the U. I'm saying the U.S. now, particularly because of this four year thing. Yeah. And I've heard this time and time again. People saying we did so well under Trump, with everything was so good, yeah. and there were some good things. That's true, there were. But I say to people, you might want to consider what Obama did in his last two three years. Right. Just 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 you know just dismiss it or don't miss it. But because if you if you come up with uh, there's certain words for it uh, policies that uh, that take 18 months to implement policies that are immediate like infrastructural policies take longer um, right. to to show an effect uh, some policies can take 20 years to have an impact right. and it's impossible it's almost impossible to judge a president by what they've done in those four years I know that sounds weird you have to look at who was the guy before or who was hopefully at some point the woman before. Right. They, they they keep going on about how things, how good things were. And I go, yeah, but there, there, was th there were things that came from the previous right. cycle. So you can't give them credit where it's due, but also understand where some of the economic uh, improvements come from. They come right. from policies from previous administrations. You can't just say that is how it is. Uh, I'm not, as I say, advocating one way or other. I don't have a vote in that election. I I, I have a, a, a hope that someone sane sits in the White House, whatever that looks like. Someone who, who actually cares about people. You can you can draw your own judgment from that as you will. Someone who is not self-absorbed. Snoopy is going to be the president? Oh, this is going to be awesome. Snoopy. <laughs> Snoop Dogg. What about no, Snoop Dogg? Snoopy. From no, no, what about Snoop Dogg? Snoopy. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. The whole country but, would be high. It'd be great. We probably all would get I'll be great. Yeah, no one, would, no one would care. No one would care. Was it a 40 or a 50 or whatever they call it? They get a 40 or a 50 and they get yeah. a, they get some cannabis and they're good to go. Yeah, not a cannabis. I do. I will say on a, on a, on a, on a completely left field note, um, weed is now legal here, as you know. It's been apparently it's actually been legal for about six years, but it became official to grow and whatever. I think. Oh, I know when it was. It was the day before the elections, the twenty eighth of May. Okay. They passed 
a bill here, the president yeah. here passed a bill saying, right, no, weed's all good now, the day before the elections. And, and, and I made a joke about this. The election. <laughs> yeah, but there's a, re there's a reason why they did it the day before the election. Okay, right. joke alert. Yeah. They wanted a joint coalition. So, ah, yeah. boom, boom. thank you. It's usual Thursday, folks. And if, don't forget exactly. to pick the staff. So, a joint coalition. I will that. say... Listen, we got I will say if you took if you took weed yeah. out of the uh, enforcement thing in yeah. many countries, yeah. the cops would have a much easier time. That's all if I can you say. Took a lot of drugs out of the enforcement thing. You'd have if you know it's funny. The Mexican cartels are, and I guess other cartels are not heroin. No heroin. Uh, yet you bad that's a special place. Right? But weed. Bad, but weed. I'm just saying. But even cocaine. Some of those drugs. Oh, if, you're, if you're stupid enough to take it and you want to die, knock yourself out. If I was the government, and I, this is why I couldn't be president, uh, uh, here's uh, what we're going to do. We're going to uh, attack all of it. Like you, the Mexican drug cartel, you don't have to smuggle anymore. You're going to bring in your 57,000 kilos and we're going to tax it. And then we're going to sell it at the dispensaries. And uh, there you go. And with the weed, that's what we're doing now. So I'd be like, I can bring down the deficit in about a week and a half. And now I agree with you on heroin. No, heroin's bad. You don't get to do it. Um, fed me all this. But if you, I'd be like, why not? If you're that stupid, well, look, me as a government isn't my job. Not is my job. Is, I can't help. I can't fix stupid. This will get. Well, you're not a parent. Stupid. A government is not a parent. Correct. And for me, look, heroin mm, bad. Yeah, heroin's bad. But, you don't do but, heroin, right? But what's it? What what I do find interesting here is now that they've taken the weed thing off the table, yeah. And and this is a true story. You can go to the local uh, supermarket or, okay. or, or shopping mall right here. That's okay. about three kilometers that way. There's a there is a shopping mall, and right next to you've got the bookstore, um, the 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 grocery store, and the weed store. They nice. and there it is, and the tech store, and then the the hairdresser, and they're all there, and it's no big deal. And it's almost like the the, the allure is gone. People don't yeah. care. It, it's right. it's. There are other, look, they don't and, and what it's done, what it's done is right. it's it is it's uh, as you say, it has curtailed yeah. a lot of the illegal drug trade, which is gonna happen anyway. Right, right. But I'm just saying, so if I say, okay, we'll make everything and I'm using heroin and fentanyl, and I'm sure there's other drugs, but those <laughs> and meth, like the those yeah, are the no, two no, things no. I can think of. Those no. are illegal, everything else is good. You can buy it at a dispensary, and well, the drug lords are just gonna tax you. The mm. drug lords aren't, first of all, going to know what to do with themselves. You're going to be like, really? You're just going to tax? Yeah, ta I don't give a shit. Eh, pay tax on it. It's a tariff. Boom. We'll sell it. There you go. We get taxed. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. At the end of the day, within a couple of years, it's not. It's going to be like, oh, oh, cocaine? No, no, no. I'm good. It's like when I was a kid, I never did any drugs. My big drug was scotch and cigars, which I still use today. But I never did cannabis. I never did cocaine. I never did any of that because it never. there was no allure to it for me. But I'm thinking mm. all these people are like, you got to try it. Okay, well, if you want to go try it, go down to the cocaine store and uh, go get whatever you get and do your bump and call a day. Sign the waiver that says I'm an idiot and uh, if it, my heart explodes, uh, it's on me. Okay, there you go. And then if you do that, to what's going to end up happening is people are like, oh, it's oh, it's no big deal. It's like it's not it's not cool anymore because it's not. Well, sensitive. I can't speak to drug trades in other countries, but I can say, and I think this might be true. Uh, I, you know, I mean, I've seen it in TV shows, therefore it must sure, be true. It's gotta be true. Um, it's gotta be true. But yeah. one, one thing that used to be a big problem here, particularly with, with weed, or right. they call it dacha here is the, is the actual word here, but let, we'll just go with weed for the, yeah. the, the wider audience. Um, the, um, or grass or Mary Jane or whatever the hell you want to call it. Oh. The, the biggest problem was that wasn't so much the weed itself yeah. it's the people that sold the weed right. and they didn't really want to be selling you weed they wanted to be selling you all the other good stuff yeah. and so but the way it worked is well we'll sell you weed and we'll add shit or we'll change stuff right, and, right. and people would die yeah. because they actually weren't smoking weed they were smoking god knows what and now that has kind of gone so yeah. if you happen to if you want to some weed or whatever, you'll go into a, a beautifully lit store in a shopping mall and buy your weed because next door you can buy cigarettes and then the next door you can buy liquor. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, they're all, are they're they good bad. for you? Maybe not. Are they bad for you? Yeah. yeah so is breathing. That's so, that's bad. but, uh, but yeah. if you, it's, yeah, it is, it's not great. You shouldn't be putting things in your lungs, but 
people smoke. We we have we don't put people in prison for cigarettes, and it could be argued. Um, I'm just saying that it's just as bad. So then we either just lock it all up, or or you see the the thing about some of the drugs is they can kill you. So you really yeah. don't want those. You don't right. want like fentanyl and things like that. You really don't want people taking that stuff. Not because you're trying to uh, um, legislate or control them. You just don't want them to die. Right. That, I need that your you, vote. I'm a leader. Yeah, you know, that, that's vote. you need yeah. someone to vote for you. Right. Exactly. Oh, come on. But but, but weed. I mean, I'm not a fan. I'll be tell you right now. I'm not a fan. I'm I don't like it. But does that mean because I don't like it, other people shouldn't be able to just, you know? I mean, alcohol. Yeah, it's okay. I don't I don't have a major beef with alcohol. Although alcoholics, that's I do. Story. Yeah. So that's another story. We have plenty of alcoholics, um, and they are able to walk into a liquor store and buy a drug. I'm uh, sorry, liquor, uh, easily. So yeah. what's the difference? So what's the difference? Taxes. That's, that's, that's what it is. Like, taxes. Tax it all. Taxes. And if you're that hmm. stupid, listen, if, yeah. if you want to drink, you drink. You drive, you go to jail. It's very simple. Like when I have scotch right. and cigars, oh, yeah. I have scotch and cigars at home. If I'm going to go out and have scotch and cigars, I Uber. I don't, yeah. I don't drive. If, I, if someone says, come over for dinner tonight, we're doing scotch and cigars. I'm like, I'm Ubering because I know that I may have more than one scotch and I know that I'll, I do not want to drive. And that's it. I'll I'll tell you an unverifiable fact. This this I could be pulling out of my ass. So what? So what? Who doesn't do that? Everybody's doing that now. Sure. But I seem to recall many years ago. Uh, so, for instance, in the UK, yeah, yeah. Um, alcohol, uh, a drink, big problem, yeah. big problem. The high streets there, you have these these kids, underage drinking, massive problem right. because it's a thing. It's a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, whereas you, 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 you swim across the channel, get onto Europe, and... I mean, the kids in Germany, I think 14 is the, the drinking age for beer. Yeah. I think it's uh, 16 for wine and 18 for spirits, something like that. Uh, so, and then in France as well. It's, it's not that it's, it's, not that it's um, um, lax. It's they don't have that, that, that woo thing about alcohol. Right. So Speaking you will find, you will good. find um, a guy giving his <laughs> seriously eight-year-old boy a right. sip of wine. Yeah, I mean, not, not the bottle. You can't have the bottle. But he has a sip and he goes, oh, I don't like that. So yeah. he doesn't care. He, he doesn't go, oh, one day I'm going to grow up and I'm going to drink wine. He has. He says, there you are, have a sip of wine. Right. Not going to do anything to him. He has a sip and he goes, Ugh. And it almost has the opposite of a, opposite effect. I mean, Europe, I'm not saying they don't have a, a drinking problem. This is where the, the fact gets pulled out of my ass. I'm not sure this is even true, but I have heard this. Um, whereas places where booze is a thing, like like where you are, this 21 age, what the hell? Yeah. So 21 is the drinking age, but I can go to war when I'm 18. What? Right. Seriously? By the way, Germany, uh, is, it, Germany is 16, and I will tell you when I was a kid. Is it 16? Up, okay, 16, yeah. When my, when my dad would be doing something and he'd open a beer, he'd go, would you like a sip? And I would take a sip. I'm like, I, I don't like it. And so I yeah. take three sips of beer my entire life, and I was like, no, nope, I'm good. Yeah, but but Steve, now imagine, imagine if he hadn't done that, and you're just thinking, I can't wait till I'm 21 and I'm going to get paralytically drunk yeah because that's what guys do yeah and and it becomes a thing for you whereas you grew up and you thought ah, i don't really like beer I, I had the opportunity i think i had my first taste of beer when i was about nine and i went this is crap yep. and i've never never liked it mm. wine is okay but it was never like oh you can't have anything i think i was uh 14 or 15 or maybe even younger and my mom said yeah you look you're staring at it why don't you have a sip and it we was, uh, so I, that was my, and I, went, and I sort of went, yeah. and I went, Oh God, no. Yeah. We had managed that. Was, that was, you know, the Jewish wine. So I, I had some <laughs> the Passover when I was a kid. I was like, seriously, I'm not drinking this. Well, as I got older, I drank more expensive wine. I was like, this is crap. Why am I drinking this? And then my, yeah. like said, my grandfather took me up for scotch and cigars at 21. And I was like, Oh, I'm in love. But once again, <laughs> I, don't drink, I, I don't drink a bottle of scotch every day. I mean, I have a glass here and there, and I have cigars here and there. It's not like I right. have twenty four seven hooked up. I mean, later intravenous. Yeah, but it, it's legal in our country. Yeah, um, but it doesn't make it doesn't make you a man to drink, is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, so just, I, I enjoy a scotch and a just, cigar, and it just it's a two hour mini holiday, and then I yeah, go back and, to it's and it's not a tool, and it's not a social tool. tool. 
No. That's, but that's the difference when people, if it becomes this forbidden fruit like weed or yeah. uh, you can't drink at a certain age, yeah. what are you going to do when you're a teenager? You want you want all that illegal stuff. You want that. You want to be, what are the, what are the adults doing? I'm going to smoke. I'm going to drink. I don't even have to, I don't even like it, but now I'm the man. I also and, think yeah. that's why sex is down because the kids now can get sex porn on the internet where when we were kids oh that's a whole nother story yeah like, we should talk for, about like, that that's the next week show but like oh god and whatever and oh that is of age that i had this like, you know can i just say this we, we will talk about it next time but i <laughs> i had this discussion with someone recently and they're saying are you advocating banning porn and i said no but the problem with it this is the problem with it right. is is it's it is what it is and and you, you're not going to stop it but what it does is it it's not a question of me denying someone or denying my kids. It it it's it breaks something down in your mind. And it's it's I just I feel I just I feel it's, it's funny. No, but I I've seen I I've I've come across people who have said it I'm not stopping anybody. You can do whatever the hell you want. You're not gonna stop it. But the problem with it is it is it creates these weird expectations in people. Well that's and because I'm and, I'm it, and it's pizza yeah, but it's it, deliver pizza. And say yeah. bong chicka wow wow. And can I tell you, anytime I've ever had sex, I never get the bong chicka wow wow music. And I'm not, <laughs> my expectation is, and I told my wife, I'm like, listen, there's no music. Yeah, and gosh. every time I see something, even in the movies, there's music going bong chicka wow wow. And I don't get that. So uh, I'm a little disappointed. So you know, I will say this. Yeah. I will say this, and I'll stir the pot. I think if you're in a, in, if you're a, if you've had the, um, the the good fortune. Yes. To be in a in a in a good relationship with someone who is um, mature and is not one of those um, what do you call them pussies that you mentioned, and someone who has a backbone and someone who will stand up to you. I'm talking about a wife now, um, not someone you know, someone of substance and right. someone of maturity and standing. Sure, I'm not saying that it can't enhance stuff, but for a 13, 14 year old boy who has no perspective on life, no, nah, I don't think so. No. I, I'm not saying ban it, but I'm just saying you, you're I not ready. Limit. I you're not ready for it. You're not yeah, ready. I think when you're 16, 17, that's a good time. Like I remember we got sex education in my school, which was very fascinating. Um, <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, you're going to do what with who? And then when you do it for the first time, you're like, wow, that is really interesting. And then mm. as you get older and you do it, you're realizing, oh, there's a whole bunch more and it's fun. But at the end of the day, it's but it's personal. It's, it's you. It's not someone else. You're not trying right, to copy but, someone. But, right. But here's what's very interesting about that. Mm. Drinking, leadership, and it all is the same. At the end of the day, it is what it is. And everybody's an individual. And it's your own personal taste. It's your own personal yeah. taste in leadership. Yeah. It's your own personal taste in whatever your, your naughty pleasure is. It's your own personal taste, what you do behind closed doors. It's your own personal taste. And that's what people, I think, forget but you do need to go back to the original topic of the show, a leader for the, for whatever purpose, business, country, whatever, that's a leader. And that can say, I screwed up. Now we fix it. And until that happens, be accountable for yourself. Yeah, be accountable. Fine, you're, you're screwed. So there you have go. some bowls, but that's another conversation. Yeah. That's a conversation. And we're going to go to the Unic farm for that one next week. Anyway, <laughs> so everybody, it was good to see you. Don't forget to subscribe and like. This show will be rebroadcasted on Sunday as well as the podcast. And he's live here every Thursday morning. So you can come in and write. God, we can talk shit, Steve. Well, oh, we can. That's gosh. why. I'm, and thank God that pretty soon a, uh, CNN will be having us live in the mornings. And that'll be awesome for the fans. <laughs> I'm kidding. It'll be BBC. All right, everybody. We'll see you, we'll see you next week. Cheers. Thank you so much for listening to this Raoul Woods, Rob Vega, whatever the hell he wants to call himself, fellow. You know, this this podcast thing, it, it makes him feel very important and he's a difficult fellow as it is to deal with. So thank you so much for putting up with him. And, 